Okay. Yeah, let's begin then. Okay, so let's uh, think about modern networks. Okay. Okay, so let's think about modern networking options for apps. So uh, normally when you write an app, right, you have to pick uh, at least one of these options, Wi-Fi, 4G, Bluetooth, or Ethernet, when it comes to uh, communicating between two computers. Okay, so let's say you don't have any of this. Then how can you still do the communication? Okay, so first I'd like to begin with a demo. So actually I'll need a volunteer to come here and use this machine. Yeah, any volunteers please? Anyone? <laughs> okay, you are you are? Okay, can we <laughs> Okay, so maybe more for a moment. Okay, so okay, over on the this screen on the left, so this I'm actually streaming the screen of this laptop over to my laptop over here and I have this program here running on my current laptop. Okay? So oh you touch you touch there already. Yeah. Okay, okay, so you can see it works this way. So, so now let me reply to you. Okay, so hi. So what is your name? Okay? Okay, so you can touch something back. Okay? Yeah, so you can see here right the communication goes on in real time. Okay? And to prove that the, my Wi-Fi is not on, you can see over here, Wi-Fi is off and my Bluetooth is also off. Okay, so the communication actually goes on by using this cable over here. Okay, so this is a serial cable, which I'll go into more details about it later. Okay. Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, so uh, just a bit of background. So uh, I and Sue right, actually gave a talk at iOS conference last month. So we talked about the using three from IoT, specifically on running on the Raspberry Pi. So during the conference, I introduced a library I wrote, which is called uh, Swift Serial. So it lets uh, Swift program use the computer serial port. Okay. So uh, Soup actually asked me this question. Sorry, not in this slide. Okay, Soup asked me the question of whether I should actually uh, talk more in details about my library. So this is why I'm here today. Okay. So this is actually the library I wrote. Okay. And uh, the original library actually was uh, not very Swifty. So Su actually made the comment that my library was actually like C code in Swift. Okay? So actually I asked the community on the Facebook, I just got Facebook page for help lah, to make my code better. So uh, JG, this guy here, he issued a pull request with me. So he made the code uh, much swift, more swiftier. Okay, so we got <coughs> I integrated the pull request into uh, my repository and renamed it Swift Serial. So what he actually did also was to make my library compatible on both Mac and Linux. Okay. Okay, so on the agenda, so I understand that not everyone of you know what is exactly the serial port, so I'll go through that in a bit. Then I'll explain my hardware setup here. Uh, then I'll go through I'll, I'll walk through my original Swift Linux serial code. Then I'll talk about how what Jin did to make my code better. And finally, I'll explain the chat app which I wrote, which you saw just now, that uses my library. Okay, so uh, what exactly is serial port? So uh, for those who are from the older generation, okay, so you probably recognize a serial port to be either one of these. Here. Yeah. So it can be the 25-pin connector or the 9-pin connector. Okay, so uh, specifically, right, a serial port is actually hardware compliant to the RS-232 standard. So this RS-232 standard was first introduced in 1962, but the definitive version RS-232C was ratified in 1969. So actually this port is about three decades old already. Okay, so in the past, what did they use serial port for? Modems, mouse, point-to-point -point network. But obviously we don't see serial ports today because it's been replaced by USB as of the 21st century. But there are actually still many devices in the world, probably millions of them that still use a serial port. So things like medical devices, scientific equipment, industrial control systems, and uninterruptible, uninterruptible power supplies. So why? Because serial ports are actually very simple and cheap to implement compared, compared to USB. And its range is 300 meters. So USB range is only 5 meters. For, so for certain specialized applications, serial ports are still better. Okay, so what's the pinout? So uh, I'm not going to go through all the 9 pins, just the, the ones in bold, which are the more important ones. So, we have the receive pin, the transmit pin, okay? 
So the ground pin, so this is for the computer to know what is binary 1 and 0. It's a reference voltage. Then there are also hardware flow control lines, clear to send, request to send. So you can see clear to send means whether the machine can send data. Then, yeah, so both of them, yeah, they are meant for the receiver and the sender. Okay, so parameters, there are actually a few. So the most important parameter is actually called the baud rate, which is another name for speed. So the what so the baud rate actually means how many bits per second you can transfer. So on Linux, you can actually transfer 4 million bits per second if the hardware can handle it. But for Mac, they cap it at 230k only. So there are others like data bits. I will not go through in detail about them. So data bits is like the size of the packet, the priority bits here. So this is something like a checksum to help detect there's an error during transmission. Then number of stop bits to indicate that this is the end of the packet. Okay, so they have, you have the hardware flow control lines, the CTS and RTS pins. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, there's also software flow control. So uh, you can opt not to use the hardware flow control like CTS and RTS. So software flow control means that, for example, if the receiver is receiving data too quickly, for example, it knows that, okay, it's too fast, you can tell the sender to slow down. So you, what the receiver can do is that they'll trans, transmit these special characters, X on, X off, to the sender to tell them to slow down. Okay, so about the hardware setup here. Okay, so uh, as you can see, there are two machines. So the first machine, this is actually a T5400. Obviously, it's not running my OS. So this one is running on Linux Mint, which is a variant of Ubuntu. Then uh, this machine here is equipped with a USB to serial adapter. So obviously, modern machines like this don't come with serial port. So what I do is that I use a USB serial adapter to emulate the serial port. Then uh, on this side, on my Mac, I have another USB serial adapter here. Okay. Then in between these two serial adapters, I have a cable called a now modern cable. Okay, so what exactly is a now modern cable? So to put it simply, a now modern cable crosses the transmit and the receive pins. Here. Okay, so the transmit pin on one machine will go to the here will go to the receive pin of the other machine and vice versa. Okay? So this is how data has been transferred between two machines. Okay, so this is a simple one because there are many types of now modern cables. The more complex one will actually handle the hardware flow control pins. The CTS clear to send and ready to send, but I will not cover it here. Okay, so now I'll go through a bit of my the original Swift Linux serial code for the benefit of those who did not go for the conference. So uh, you can see, right, uh, there are many baud rate enums here. So this is how we actually use my library. Lah. Okay? So what you do is first you initialize my library with the name of the serial board. Yeah. Okay? Then after that, you focus off. Okay. Okay? Then after you uh, initialize my library with the name of the serial board, you open the serial board here. Okay? Then after that, you set the port settings. So Remember just now I mentioned about the baud rate, the priority, the data bits and stop bits. So you have to actually tell my program what are their current settings. Then uh, here, right, I actually have a control structure. So Swift actually does not have its own serial port API. I have to call the C code, the C functions to do it. So here, right, actually this terminals, right, is actually a C function here. So terminals actually returns a data structure. So I put a uh, the C equivalent code here. So this is a Swift equivalent. So once I have the structure right, I have to populate the structure with the connection parameters. So with all of this, the priority, data bit, stop bit, and so on, and the flow control. So this is how I set it. So if priority are set this and so on. So notice all of this actually bit manipulation. Very common in C code, but not so common in Swift code. Then uh, I've set the data bit and so on. You see the flow control settings, the the <coughs> sorry, the clear to send and ready to send, and the software flow control. Then uh, there is one portion that is uh, of significance. So one of the portion, okay, here C underscore CC right is actually a C fixed array. 
So in C, a C fix array is interpreted as a tuple in Swift. So in order to address, to set the value right in C, all you need to do is to specify the variable as an index. But in Swift, we cannot do that. So I have no choice but to hard code the dot six here, which is not exactly very clean to way of doing. Okay. Anything else? Okay, yeah, one more point. Okay, so uh, notice that I have read and write functions here. So these read and write actually C functions. So what you do is actually you specify the bytes that you want to send across the serial board. And since these are C functions, right, they require C APIs, uh, sorry, C objects. So the object that they request is actually a char pointer, a pointer to a char array. Okay? And the Swift equivalent of that is actually unsafe mutable pointer. Okay, so yeah, there's a reason why they call it unsafe. Okay, so in C right, to create a char point char array to a char a pointer to a char array, you have to actually malloc the number of bytes you want. In Swift to do it, you have to dot allocate it here. Okay, you have to allocate the number of bytes, but this allocation actually goes outside the boundaries of the automatic reference counting. So you actually have to deallocate it. So I, what I did is I put a default here. So in C, you free the buffer. So in uh, Swift, you just deallocate the bytes here. Okay? You cannot rely on ARC to do it. If not, you have a memory leak here. Okay. So any questions about this code? Okay. So now I'll go on to the improvements that JJin did for my app. That's how I saw the library. So the most important, the most significant improvement was actually he made my library cross-platform. The previous library was Linux only. So he made my library compatible with Mac also. So let's see how they do it. Okay. So the first issue is that of the baud rate. So earlier I mentioned that uh, Linux allows the baud rate to go as high as 4 million. But for Mac, the limit is only 230k. Okay, so this affects the enum which I yeah which affects the enum the number of enum choices. So in Linux, right, I can go up to four million here. But in Mac, I only go equal to two hundred thirty k. So since this is actually cross platform code, right? Yeah, so you have to actually do a pre processor pre processor the directive. So here, if OS Linux, then the compiler will use this code. But if it's on Mac, it will not use this code it will use this code instead. Okay? So there's actually a strange thing I noticed about the preprocessor directive. Okay. So in C, the preprocessor directive is something like this. If define, do this. Else if, do this. On Swift, is this. Okay? There's a subtle difference. The C preprocessor directive is a line level, operates on a line level. But the Swift preprocessor directive operates on the statement level. Okay, so this has some implications here. So for example, right, you see here the Linux code. If I use the C preprocessor directive, I can technically just put the else if Linux here. Somewhere around sorry, don't have. Oh yeah, somewhere around inside here. Okay, but I cannot do it because this entire thing is actually a single statement. So I cannot break up the yeah, I have to sorry, I have to make the entire see duplicate the entire board rate code here. I cannot put it in between, else if red. So yeah, so that's a troublesome thing. So I end up having to duplicate two gigantic box print statements. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, another issue, yes. So there's also a different way of opening the port. So you can see here, on Linux, it does it this way. On Mac, I require extra parameters. So yeah, so this is typical of cross-platform code. Okay. Uh, so he also made my code swift here. So he added a uh, lot of guard statements. So for okay. example, like this. Uh. So because uh, okay, I don't use Swift on a daily basis. Uh. So I'm not very familiar with all these guard statements. So what he did was actually add here. Before that, I actually like if it's empty, something, something, something. So now he put a guard here. Okay. Then you throw an exception if needed. Okay, then uh, another issue is that of the struct. Okay, so earlier I mentioned that uh, there's a problem of Swift reading the C fixed array as a tuple. So I put a dot six, which actually a not very clean way since I'm hard coding the index. 
So what did uh, Jason did was that he actually created a type alias here. So he specified out the entire yeah, type of the C underscore CC array. Then after he specified the entire type, then he did assignment. So this is actually a much cleaner way of doing things. Okay. So uh, that depends on opinion because the act of doing so long actually makes the code more, ma more messy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a better, better opinion. Okay, so now I'll talk uh, about my Swift chat app that uses this library. Okay, so this is a command line desktop app as you all saw earlier. Uses this library can run on Mac and Linux. That machine is on Mac. Oh, sorry, on Linux. Okay. So let me talk about it. Introduce interesting details. Okay, opening. Sorry. Okay. So I have uh, one function here that uh, prepares the standard input because uh, if you just type into a command line app, right, your what characters that you type will immediately appear on the screen, which I don't want that because I want to control the screen. So we actually need to make sure that the standard input does not, sorry, the standard output does not, sorry, standard input does not echo up. Okay, so these are actually C functions because Swift again does not have any API for this. So I need to make sure that the standard input does not echo out anything. Then uh, background threads. Okay, this is another interesting point. Okay, let me go to it. So uh, on Mac, if you want to do background threads, typically you will use Grand Central Dispatch. Okay, it applies for iOS also. But the issue is that on Linux, there's a problem with Grand Central Dispatch. Okay, so I'll open the link for you and show you. So there's actually a there's actually an issue already on the Swift here. So it here says that there's an issue with using Dispatch with Swift build. So Grand Central Dispatch requires the Lit Dispatch library, which has issues with the Swift package manager. So this issue is still unresolved at, at this time. So because of this, basically you cannot use GCD on Linux. Okay, so the alternative way is actually to use P threads, which is actually short for O6 threads. So this is why I have this very uh, convoluted function here to call uh, functions in another track. Okay. So, uh, okay, so that I forgot to mention why I need two threads. Okay, so uh, basically you have a thread that reads from the serial port and prints to the screen, and another thread that reads what you are typing and sends to the other user. Okay. okay so, okay. So another thing is you notice that uh, earlier there's dynamic so whatever I type here, right, will go on to the other side. Oh, okay, never mind. Go to sleep already. So you also earlier that whatever I type here, the other machines receive it immediately. So in Swift, right, there's actually no API, right, for you to receive dynamic input from the keyboard. The only API available is called read line, which is here. Okay. So what this does is that this function here will only return the input when the user presses enter. When you press enter, then you can receive uh, 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 data from the keyboard. So, sorry? Why didn't the backspace work? The backspace? backspace didn't work. Actually, the backspace can send across also. But it didn't? It didn't interpret it as the other machine couldn't didn't interpret it properly. Okay. Because uh. when I press backspace, it, uh, it okay. space. Okay, the backspace actually, right, I need to actually receive the input and take away the character. I did not program that part. You need to remove the character from the screen. Okay. Okay. So, what's the alternative to do that? You have to rely on the C function called getchar for that. Okay. Let me go to it. Okay, next. Yeah. Here. So I have to call the C function again to do what Swift cannot do. Then uh, another issue is that I have to turn off uh, output buffering. So uh, I mentioned that there are two threads. So one thread will print to the screen what the other user has typed, and another thread will read what you have typed and print to your own screen. So the because there are two threads writing to the screen, right? There's some issue with that. Sometimes the characters don't appear in your screen because of output buffering. So again, I have to call a C function called set buffer standard output to now, so that it will not 
so that it will not buffer the output. Here. So again, we yeah, have to call C functions. Okay, print to screen without new line. So uh, the default print function right on Swift will have a line terminator, a new line terminator. Okay? Then uh, I don't want to actually have a new line terminator whenever you type something. So that's why I what you can do is actually just specify an empty string here. So the print line, this print function will not print out a new line whenever you print an extra character to the screen. Okay, so uh, okay now I come to the, almost to the end already. Yeah. So why I did I call this project a science project? Because yeah, because of this guy here. So actually, this term science project was actually coined by this guy called Raymond Chen. He works at Microsoft, and he runs this blog called the Old New Thing. So inside the, his blog post, he coined this term science project. He gave several uh, categories which you can, you can classify a project as a science project. So the actually the categories are here. So the first category is a feature that looks really cool, or a feature that a project that requires hardware that few people have, or you try to solve a problem that nobody really considers to be a problem. So I would think that uh, I'm trying to solve a problem that nobody thinks is an issue. Uh, because why would you not have Wi-Fi or Ethernet or Bluetooth? See, I'm just doing this just for fun. Okay, so. If next time somebody asks you a question, if you don't have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, mobile, or Ethernet, can you still transfer data with, between two machines? Yeah, you have to answer here. Okay, so yeah, that's all. Any questions? Any questions? Um, I think one of the functions that you click the buffer, yeah. you like to go CCT. So, sorry, let me go into the code again, I can't remember. So, yeah. yeah, here. What is the value of CCT? Everything is. Uh, you mean? 342, yeah. 342. Yeah, so. CC underscore T. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think that's a type. CCT and that's a type. Um, hmm. So, CC underscore T is an alias for another type. I can't remember what the alias are. It's actually a C alias. It's like, oh, for example, the bot rate is called speed T. Yeah, here, yeah, speed T. So speed T is actually an uh, alias for unsigned integer, I believe. So on the C type side. Okay, uh, any more questions? Yeah. You need to use the word of C language. Yeah. Will it be adapted to do in Objective-C? Uh, okay, on Linux, right? The Swift compiler is pure Swift. There's no Objective-C compiler there. Yeah, that's all? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a little different uh, today without Swift. Usually you'll be the one coming up here and trying to... Uh